First this morning, we're joined by a mother and son, Helena and uh, Alan Lee from Glen Carr uh, on the Elytrum Sligo border. And they have a very special bond um, because apart from being mother and son, um, next January, in what's potentially a life-saving operation, Alan will donate a kidney to Helena. He's been found to be a suitable donor for her. Um, she's had severe kidney problems. And Helena, I'll go to you first. I think you, you undergo dialysis on a, on a daily basis, do you not? Yeah, I have, yeah, really. I suppose I've been on dialysis now for just over a year. Um, and I suppose the, the, the kidney failure has been there, there for, for a wee while. But obviously, the last year and a half, it's, it's, it's been more intense. And, you know, it got to a stage a year ago where it was necessary to go on dialysis to um, obviously to, to, to continue with, a, you know, a reasonably healthy lifestyle. I was also put on the um, kidney uh, w- waiting list for, you know, for a kidney donation. Um, so I've, I've been on that for just over a year as well. Um, and obviously, you know, Alan, last January, put himself forward and, and you know, is, is is about to donate his kidney to me, which is, a you know, a, a wonderful thing for him to do. And, and it is, is, as we say, it's a very, very... Um Serious operation from your in, in that I see serious one in that it, it is a potentially life saving operation, Helene, isn't it? Well, well, it, well, absolutely. I mean, it is a life saving operation. You know, the same as dialysis is a medical treatment, and it's it's, it's a life saving treatment. If you um, don't have that sort of you know intervention, then you don't continue to live. Well, Alan, good morning to you, and thanks uh, for joining us as well. It's. Um, well, you you were matched as the donor, as as Helena says, some time ago. Um, yeah, um, I went for numerous tests, and um, they told me that I would be uh, I was a perfect match. Uh, my father was also a match, so the fact that he was a match as well made me like even better for her. And there was never any doubt, was there, that you were going to go ahead with this? No, well, there was never a question. I never even considered it, to be honest. Um, it was always just gonna. I was definitely going to do it. Um, I think everyone in my situation would they'd never even um, question whether to do it or not. And what's involved? This is happening in January, Alan, isn't that the case? Yeah, so um, it'll be an operation. I'm not sure the, the length of the operation, but the operation will happen in January and then there'll be a three-month um, resting period or, or time that I need to recover where I can't lift anything heavy or, or do anything strenuous. Um, to the, the numerous tests that I did to get to the point where I am, uh, like an ECG or an ultrasound, and we did blood tests and uh, just to make sure that I was in complete um, good health and mm. that I was able to do it. Okay, but uh, eventually, you know, despite that period of three months, as you say afterwards, you you will return to full health. There's, oh there's yeah, have any consequences for you at all? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll be in perfect health. So I'm looking at it as a three month break, really. I'll get to. Do nothing for three months. Helena, there are a number of people in, in similar circumstances who have had um, such operations and who are awaiting um, such operations. Uh, and you're aware of that, of course. There are a lot of people like you out there. There, there are an awful lot of people. I mean, at any one time, there, there's almost, uh, you know, a thousand people in Ireland alone waiting for a donation, whether it's a kidney or another organ. And, you know, I suppose it it brings us to the reason that Alan and I decided to, you know, go public with our story. It's to raise the awareness of, you know, the importance of carrying a donor card. Uh, You know, how, you know, a a donation can save lives. Um, I mean, it's a very... Organ donation is, mm. is a huge issue for families, you know, and you know, if they find themselves in a situation where, you know, a loved one is, you know, not going to live any longer, whether it's, you know, for whatever the circumstances are, but to um, donate organs, you know, there, there can be eventually down the road, you know, a great, uh, you know, it can help a family in, in, in a tragic situation if, if, if that does occur that they have actually helped other people to continue to live. Um, I mean, in my case, it's a live donation, um, and I will continue to live because Alan has donated to me. But in other circumstances, people are waiting for a phone call, Um, you know, a phone call that could come at 2 o'clock in the morning or at any time. And, you you know, you're always waiting for that phone to to ring because you know that that's your, your way of, continue to live or continue to get back to health you know or whatever it is 
Okay, and as we said, you, you you get dialysis treatment. That is that a bit of an ordeal, Helena, for you? Or has it been? Yeah, I, I do now what's called peritoneal dialysis, and uh, that that is where you have your dialysis every night. Um, I have a machine at home uh, which I set up every night, and it's an eight-hour uh, treatment. So you actually eight hours. Um, yeah, you connect onto the machine as as you go to bed, and uh, it actually the 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 process of 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 cleaning the blood actually happens over the course of the night while you sleep. Right. Okay. So that that, that must be tough enough, no doubt. And uh, we know there are loads of people who have to undergo such such treatment. But it it, it is difficult, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. I mean, it is, and you know, some of it is kind of psychological to to, to get around the, the psychological side of. You know, to continue to live, I need to connect to a machine every night. And, you know, once, once you've got round that psychological side of it, it actually, believe it or believe it not, becomes part of your routine. Um, you know, for me, you know, once, once I kind of got my head around it, I was I, I was okay. I, I You know, I, I got into the, the routine of setting up the machine, making sure that I had eight hours in bed every night, Um and, and, you know, it's all right, OK, this is a period of my life where I need to do this. Um, and, and I've always kind of viewed it as a period of my life. I've, I've always felt, I am, you know, I've always had the view I'm going to get a kidney donation, whether it's through the, um, the donor, uh, you know, the deceased donor system or whether it's through a live donation. Um, so it's, it's always been, uh, you know, for me, a, a, a time where I get to the next stage in my life. All right. Okay. So, Ellen. Um, well, it's 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 a wonderful Christmas present, first of all, Helena, isn't it, uh, for you? Well, it's it's. I mean, it's 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 a fantastic Christmas present. It's it's a life changing present, and I, I'll never ever get a present like it again. All right. Okay. And you are giving something back, Alan, as well, isn't it? There is a. Um, you're raising money for um, by way of a, of a Christmas swim, isn't that right? To yeah, raise money for the kidney association. Yeah, Christmas Day dip, so basically jump into Glencar Lake and jump out. Um, so we're doing that on Christmas Day at about um, half 11 in the morning. Uh, at the minute, I have sponsorship cards, and uh, we're in advertising through the papers and stuff, and the sponsorship cards, are, people are taking them off me left, right, and centre, so it's great. Um, and then I have a Facebook page called the Glencar Christmas Day Dip, so if anyone wants to, to have a look at that. Um, also... Uh, in terms of raising awareness for the for donor cards, um, you can get a donor card by free texting five zero zero five zero. You free text the word donor, and they'll send you one straight to your house. Or you can get an application if if anyone has a smartphone out there for for an iPhone or an Android. You can uh, you search organ donor e card, and you can also have your your donor card on your iPhone instead of carrying it in your wallet. So I think that's a great way of um, yeah. people can get that. And I, I think it, it's quite essential that people do get these things because um, in this country we have an opt-in system and basically you have to go to lengths to get a donor card as we're in other countries like Sweden and Austria. They have an opt-out system where everyone is a donor and you have to go to lengths yeah. to, to well, not I, be a donor. Well, I was, just, I was just going to ask that. There, there have been some suggestions, I think, that it should be compulsory to, to, to uh, carry an, an organ donor card. Yeah, well, it's quite common in uh, in Europe. Um, there's many, many countries. I think there's 24 countries in Europe that it's an opt-out system where they don't need to carry a donor card. Everyone is presumed to be a donor, and it's up to your next of kin or it's up to you to, before you know you pass or whatever to, to go and take yourself off the list. Um, there, there's great debate in, in the UK at the minute because they're, they're finding it very hard to get donors, so they're actually there's talk of them changing it. And in America, a lot of people um, sadly die on dialysis. I think it's about 6,000 a year. So it, it's, it's great debate over there as well. All right, OK. Helena, it, ha- it happens in January. You don't, you don't know a date yet, do you, at this stage? Well, we do actually have a date now. Right. It's, it's at the moment, it's pencilled in for the 28th of January. I mean, that, that could change. But at the moment, we're working towards that date. Right, well, the very best of luck with that and uh, the best of luck with the fundraising as well. And many thanks uh, for joining us uh, this morning.